So I mean, I missed, uh, you missed most probably ask your colleagues, but I think from your team, but I think I'm, I, what you may have missed on Zoom is the comments I made about writing consistently and in a clear way so I can understand if you have to write an essay or an explanation. I may have something like that in the midterm. I mean, not uh, like what I gave you, um, but something specifically related to the uh, problem, but I may ask you to explain. So for example, in a, a previous, um, in a previous um, midterm, I asked students to explain what is a resonance, which we are gonna see later. Explain it, we, we see it is part of, we're, like, we're gonna do that as a matter of fact, in the second part of this class after the break. But I asked them, I say, explain, all right? So I may ask you to explain it in words, not just to show me anything. That is important for this class. For all of these classes, writing is important, all right? I'm gonna, I wanna assess you on that. So be careful on how you do it. And since you are in teams, that's exactly where I'm gonna have these kinds of questions. Please make sure you have your the members of your team to um, take it out. Second, and there were a number of uh, students who came earlier and then they said <clears throat> that, were, that uh, they could not find the team members, but when I checked all of these homo team homework number one, every one of them had all three names with the exception of one. So um, for this particular one case where there was only one member, I'm going to reach out to that team but I did not see another one that had only fewer, that had fewer than three names. So if you still have a problem, this, that implies to me that all of, implies to me, according to, <laughs> according to uh, the NGDA in ethics, all right, that all three individuals participated. If you have a problem with the team, please come out because, and speak with me, either individually on Zoom, ask me if you have, um, if you wanna speak with me individually, I will tell you to come just before or the, I mean, for uh, privately, I should say, I will ask you to come just before the office hours or stay uh, with me after those, so I can speak with you. But if you have an issue, please let me know so I can take some action. Um, okay, so that was what I wanted to discuss from my end. Is there anything then, um, questions or comments from your end? I will send you a survey now that you have seen uh, two and a half weeks of the class to see what are some of the things I may wanna change. I don't wanna ask you here, I will send you an individual survey, it's gonna be anonymous and you're gonna get like five points or 10 points for that for submitting it, all right? Because it might take five minutes, but I wanna make sure that I recognize it. Just to see, I will ask you about the class and how we do things, just to make sure that if there are any issues, you know, some things are not working very well, then we take care of this now, not later. Any questions or comments? Yes. Um, I was hoping like, the, no, I mean, today or tomorrow, all right? It's gonna be, you, you're gonna see it and I'm gonna give you time to do it. It's not, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna ask you, I mean, time. I will give you until this weekend. And it's not gonna be, it's gonna be yes, no, yes, no, all right? Or agree, strongly agree, you know, the surveys, how they go. Five, five minutes maximum. Okay, um, any other questions? I always try to put before, say every class, I always try to put the video of the previous class on. I cannot do it the same day sometimes because I have other things to do, uh, both for the department and for my research group, all right? I have graduate students, I have a postdoc. Um, we have to fix the lab. By the way, that I need to make an announcement. We have a lab of four different rooms that we are going to make it into a very nice lab for, um, it's not gonna be for electromagnetics, but for sensors and systems, which is electromagnetics is an important part of it because radio, for example, radar, all right? There are sensors, even LIDAR that uses a, a laser. Those labs, those four rooms, we were supposed to fix it two years ago, but because of COVID, and then because of the issues we had with the bad weather last year and the, and the building 
uh, raisin bakery. The building was closed until July. We started in July making those uh, changes. We are recruiting a manager for the labs. However, we need to throw away all of the old junk and we are bringing new equipment. If um, I have a postdoc who helps me with that organizing, the manager is not here yet. We are recruiting the person. If you want to work and then we'll pay you the uh, whatever undergraduate students are paid by the hour to help us put, because it's all electronic equipment, like uh, um, whatever we, we use in the lab, cables, connectors, you know, it's not like the equipment that we cannot just throw in the garbage, we have to surplus. And we have, according to university guidelines, to put like the cables here, the connectors here, the other equipment there in other boxes, and then they will bring movers and take them out. But we need people to help us separating those into boxes. If we have already found one undergrad who will help us, but if you know anybody, if you are interested yourselves to spend a few hours a week but, and pay, get paid for this, please let me know. If you know another uh, friend of yours who is interested, let me know, all right? Might be up to 10 hours, yes, uh, throughout, yes. I don't know the department has, I have to find out, all right? Because the university has very particular things how they pay. Do you know how they pay like work study? Eight, I will find out. Eight is kind, eight is not even for, I mean, it's 15 for, is it not 15 for like minimum pay anymore? Across the board and on the US is 15 for minimum pay, isn't it? Ah, uh, 725. Well, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to be higher than this, but I, I, whatever they allow me to do, all right, because they have, I don't know, um, I'll let you know by email, so, because I cannot tell you right now what it is. All right. Um, that. Any, anything else? All right, we are starting. So today we said we are going to solve problems on the, on the basis of what we have seen before. And what we have seen before was to remind you, Coulomb's law, you remember this circle that I made, a, maybe I did not make it here, but what I wanted to remind you is that we found Coulomb's law, we talked rather, we did not find it, <laughs> Coulomb found it. So we talked about Coulomb's law, Then from there, we found the electric field, if you remember the progression. Then from the electric field, we found the electric flux density. So E, Coulomb's law gave us F. So we, gave, we went from F to E and then to D, where D is epsilon not E in free space. Then from here, we spoke about Gauss's law. And then from here, from Gauss's law, you can prove Coulomb's law, all right? So we went like this. That's how we introduced these concepts. It's like a circle because everything is connected. It's not like Gauss's law and Coulomb's law are at conflict, all right? They all involve the same entity. So obviously there are relationships between the same entity, so they have to be identical. Uh, there is another way because they are on this circle. This circle is also going, can go like that. You can start with Gauss's law from here. You can go to D from Gauss's law. You can, of course, um, it, from which involves D and Q. Gauss's law is this one. If you remember. From there, you go and define E from DE. All right, E. From E, then you can prove using Gauss's law that F, which is QE, all right, 
is um, given by Coulomb's law and so forth. So what I wanted to tell you is that these entities, these three entities, which is force, which is QE, as you can see, the electric field, which we defined from force, the, the displacement, uh, the, uh, excuse me, electric flux density, which we um, derived from E, and then Gauss's law, they're all connected. So you can either go from F to define E then and D, or you can start with D, define E, and then go to F, but they are all interconnected. Now, why do I, why do I make a deal about this? Because we use either Coulomb's law or Gauss's law to solve problems, all right? When do we do? When do we use one versus the other? Ideally, you can use both of them, but Usually, Coulomb's law tends to be more complex mathematically, all right? And Gauss's law always tends to be simpler to use if you have symmetries in your, and that's what the problems are going to show you that we are going to solve today. So today, we are going to solve problems using various sources and we are going to start with uh, sources that have symmetries to see how we are going to use gauss's law all right always a source with symmetry please use <laughs> gauss's law okay so now we start and i say here spherical volume charge okay so it's a chart and now, uh, now i need to uh, also remind you of these definitions that we've seen last time, Monday. So, so far until, you know, Monday, we also talked about the point charge, all right? But now we are talking about charge distributions. We are talking about charges that distribute. They're not just point charges where we superimpose as we see, we saw in an example. Now there are truly distributed charges. To be able to deal with these charges, we use the charge densities, and you have here the three of them, line, surface, and volume charge density, okay, which so, we talked about this last time. So now, as it says here, we have a spherical volume charge. What does that mean? It means, as it says here, that we have a charge that, distribu that distributes evenly, and see the evenly here that I say is important. That is important. Why is that important? Because I give you the charge, the total, and I tell you that it's distributed. Unless I tell you how it is distributed, you don't even know how to develop a charge density. Is that right? So the easiest way to do it is by tell you evenly throughout, and then from the charge and the radius, therefore, of the sphere, I can find a charge density, okay? So this is what I do here. The charge density and is a volume charge density because it is a volume, a spherical volume. I divide that, I divide the charge by the volume of the sphere and then you see how much the charge density is. And you see it both in um, its value, of course, and the units, all right? You remember we'll have both of them. I stopped that here, so then I can solve it in real time and you will see. And uh, of course, I have already this presentation done, but I wanna do it in real time. So now we take this sphere, all right, let me do it here. In fact, that's a different problem I have started. So we take this sphere, all right, that has the charge in there. And in fact, I'll put the charge in here rather. Um, I'll do it a little thicker here. Yes. Yes. I'll post the notes. So no problem with that. Um, but I would like to do it by hand because it gives you time to absorb what I'm saying as opposed to going quickly through my notes. 
all right? So I want you to, it slows me down and so you can follow. So now if I go here, that's the center and that's where my chart is. What is then, um, uh, Gauss's law says that the divergence inside this volume, just inside the volume B, the divergence, why do that? The divergence here is equal of D is equal to Q sub V inside V. And how much is outside? Outside and every point outside of the volume is zero. Do you agree? Because outside of the volume, V, there is no charge. Okay, so keep that in mind. Then what do we know from the divergence theorem? Now for the divergence theorem, I specifically I specifically consider this surface S and this surface, you remember what I said? The surface S is a vector. And what is the vector for the surface? Is this vector N, which is along what direction in the spherical coordinate system? Is along the radial direction. Are you with me on that? So practically N, equals to a sub r in spherical coordinates, okay? Radial. All right, what does uh, divergence theorem tells me? The divergence theorem, divergence theorem tells me the following. That if I consider this volume that encloses the whole chart, then the volume integral of divergence of D on this volume, in this volume equals the surface closed surface integral over this surface S, all right, S that you see here of D dot DS, where DS is a binotesimal vector and DS, this vector has the direction of the surface, of course, at that point, let's assume that is here, and of course, a value ds. Okay. Now, um, let's think about this problem before we start doing anything else. And now let's think about its symmetry. And I'm gonna ask you the following. In spherical coordinates, where we are, before we go anywhere from here, we have to start thinking about how the physics of the problem, all right? So let's, in fact, remember what are the spherical coordinates? What are the spherical coordinates? R, radial, phi, and then I want you, somebody has to tell me to see whether you remember that. These are the three spherical coordinates, okay? So if I go here, and do the spherical coordinates, you will have to define them um, using a Cartesian coordinate system. That's how you define spherical coordinates. And if I am at this point of the surface, and that's ds, then my spherical coordinates will be the distance of this the radial, I should say, the radial direction from here, it will give me the direction of this surface. Then if I take the um, projection of this point on the X, Y system are gonna, is gonna give me phi with this direction phi from the X axis and then theta with this direction from the z-axis, all right? The directions for the angles are important because these are coordinate systems. The direction for phi is important because that means that it goes around like counterclockwise, all right? It goes like that. And the direction for theta is important because it goes from z up, down, 
So you need to remember the direction. So what is the, for a, for a, a point on the surface of the sphere, the uh, AR direction is the radial that connects the center of the sphere with the point. The phi direction is exactly at that point, the direction of this arrow you see here, it's gonna be along that direction. And the phi direction is gonna be exactly at that point, this. And then the, the directions will be, far, uh, so practically, um, I, would, I don't wanna say more of this, just go and remember those from your, all right, spherical coordinate system because we can take a long time and we're not gonna be able to solve too many problems. But just to remember the coordinate system. Okay, why is that important? What did you say? We remember you said, I said that it has spherical symmetry. What does this really mean? Mathematically, I, we said it, we all understand it. What does it mean? If there is spherical symmetry, D, it varies with what? Means that everywhere I turn the sphere around like this, like this, anywhere, I see the same thing. Does that mean that to you? Spherical symmetry seems that any way I will take the sphere and I change it, I will see the same thing. Okay, what does that mean that I see the same thing? What uh, D, for example, is a function of what in that case? For, let's see only what, first of all, the fu what function of it is gonna be. Is it gonna change with what of the three parameters? R, 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 theta or phi? Any one of them? All of them? What do you think? Just R, exactly. So this is gonna be only a function of R, all right? And of course, R is a vector because it, it goes, but it's gonna be only a function of that. There is not gonna be in there, in fact, let me just simplify things. It's gonna be only a function of that. It's not gonna be there any theta or any phi. Okay, that is important. Now, if um, D is a function of R only, then what uh, that means is that um, at and on the surface of this sphere, D of R is constant, all right? If I now have sphere, uh, the surface S of this sphere on this surface, everywhere on this surface, D is a constant. Do you agree? Okay, perfect. In also, what else do we have? Um, and I don't have the book here, but I think somebody needs to remind me what is the divergence in spherical coordinates? Do you remember we had that? Okay, I'll tell you where we had it. We had it. So that's how you're gonna solve your problems. If you go, to um, the first lecture. Yeah, let me see if I can. Ah, home page. All right. If you go to the first, um, to this, the first week, the first week I had there, in fact, the second week, I had a uh, vector property, scalar vectors, and um, also, I had vector operators. So if you go to vector operators, which is in your notes, there is, I have all of, of these expressions, all right? So if you don't have a book, and if you are somewhere away, then you find the divergence operator in three um, coordinate systems, okay? So here, we are gonna have, um, the divergence of D, just to remember, is gonna be one over R cube theta 
theta r r square and that's d r only because the other ones they don't have they they are derivatives of theta and phi so practically that's the only thing however you don't necessarily have to bother with this because we have the divergence theorem all right so you, the divergence theorem helps you avoid all of these things that you may need in other problems that you may solve so even if i have that i don't necessarily need it for now so i will just put it aside and just remember it for your convenience so this one is constant i need to remind you constant on s okay so now i'm going to the divergence theorem and divergence theorem tells me that um, first of all, from Gauss's law, we have what? The divergence of D equals Q sub V, as I told you up here inside the volume and Q sub V outside. So if I take the volume integral of this, it's gonna give me what? That first front side of the divergence theorem is going to give me that this one is going to be the volume integral here of this charge density. But if I take this charge density and I take the volume integral of that, what is going to give me by definition? It's going to give me the charge Q. So now I have that. So this is my, this is two. So from one and two and two, what do I have? That surface integral of D that DS is equal to Q. Okay. So also because of spherical symmetry and because ds is equal to a sub bar ds what that gives me is the surface integral gives me the d r okay ds is equal to q what that gives me is the D, since dr, this bar is constant on the surface, as we said before, that then tells me that this integral, excuse me, is equal to Q, which also tells me since the surface integral is the surface of the sphere, which is four pi r squared equals q, which tells me that d sub bar equals q over four pi r squared, which in fact tells me from here, since this is equal to epsilon naught e sub bar, that tells me that e sub bar equals q over four pi epsilon naught r square so that's very interesting all right why is that very interesting from which point of view okay when you go your q is inside the sphere but distributed on the surface of the sphere, your electric field is identical to what as if the Q was concentrated at the center of the sphere. But it's only there on the surface of the sphere. All right. If now, so this is on the surface of the sphere on S. Also, because, because um, I don't have another function 
that gives me the values for the other components of V that tells me that in this spherically symmetric problem, the electric field and the electric flux density, they have only one component, which is the R component. So practically tells me that the whole E has only one component, the R component. And, there, and for that reason, D. Okay, so we found these two functions without using Coulomb's law. Okay, now let me do the following. First of all, I need to make this a little smaller. A little smaller, why not? Okay. Now we are going to go further and we are going to see what happens inside the sphere and then outside of the sphere. So we are now on the surface of the sphere. All right. So that's case one here on, on surface S. Okay, so now we go further down and we go inside the sphere, okay? If I were to go inside the sphere and let me take this one here, copy. Inside the sphere, um, let me erase some things. Okay, this is the charge. And then this is the center, all right, of the um, cylindrical system. Okay, let's put this one here again, just to help you. That's Z. Now I go inside the sphere on a surface like this. All right, so I'm, in, I'm inside and I'm trying to integrate on that sphere because I'm going to a I'm going to a radius which is smaller than capital R, which is the sphere, um, the sphere's radius. So this one here I'm indicating with little r. Okay, so r here is less than capital R. Okay, then I do the same thing, everything as before. The only difference is when I get here, so I will copy this again to see how I'm gonna get a different result. Copy. To see how much simpler it is if we do it this way. So if you copy this, let me rethink. Now this is different sphere and let me call this uh, S, the surface of this sphere is S sub R. And as a matter of fact, I can make this thinner and I can make this one thick. This is the sphere on the surface now. This is the surface I'm considering. This surface has a radius lowercase r. So it's the S sub bar surface, I put it here. And if you remember, I will erase this and then I will remind you that this is gonna be the volume integral of this volume V sub bar, which is a small, okay, the volume that is enclosed by the surface S sub bar, V sub bar of Q V, Q V, dB. How much is that? What do you think? How much is this gonna this this um, volume integral is gonna give us? It's not gonna be Q. How much is enclosed by this smaller sphere? 
how much charge is enclosed by this sphere. It's gonna be Q sub V multiplied by the volume of the smaller sphere. Do you agree? So it's gonna be Q sub V and the volume of the smaller sphere is gonna be this. Do you agree? That's what I'm gonna have here. And then I have to go and continue, but of course now the, what I'm gonna change here is this gonna be, see what I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change this to be on the surface of sphere S bar. This is gonna be S bar. And the surface of this sphere is gonna be four pi lower R, lowercase r squared. All right. And of course I'm, I'm removing Q and in its place, I'm gonna put this QV times four thirds pi R cube, which in fact is going to, I will put here, it gives me eventually an electric field because this is nothing else but epsilon naught ER just to remind you, is giving me Q sub V thirds times R. Okay, do you see that? This and this gives me R, pi goes away, four goes away, a uh, three goes in the, uh, no, three is in the denominator. Okay, so it gives me that. Um, it's four pi r. I just want to make sure that I'm correct here that I have not missed anything. Four pi r square to v. Oh, okay, excuse me. Good, good. All right, so we are good with that. So we'll put it here. Okay. Yes, thank you. All right. Now, if I go back to what Q sub V was, okay, then we will see later. You can go back to what Q sub V is. Let me in fact do it here, Q sub V. Q sub V, if you remember, was Q divided by four pi R, uh, three, four pi thirds, R cube, all right? So if I pl plug this in there, so four, say, and five, I have that E sub bar is gonna be Q, four pi over three times three epsilon naught, R cube, and then you have R. All right, so here, what I have is that it's gonna be Q over four pi epsilon naught, and then it's gonna be little r over r cube. Well, well, the capital R is the radius of the surface of this um, charged sphere. Okay, so this is six. Then you can do a similar thing which I would like you to do it on your own. I will have it in my notes where you expand the sphere and you go outside of the volume, all right? In fact, I will just tell you how much it's gonna be. Uh, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna do this one here. Here, 
Okay. Um, so maybe I will take that. How much time do we have? We don't have too much time. Um, I will just take this for a moment. Copy. So this is outside. Of out sphere of radius r, okay? Just so you remember. So here I have this, but see what I'm doing. I'm taking this circle and I'm growing it. So this radius becomes the outside radius and I will call it R prime, okay? So it's bigger than R. R prime here is bigger than R. And I do the same thing. But when I do this, I will do the same analysis as here. All right, let me do this. This one, this, copy, and then go outside, paste. So when I go and integrate on a sphere outside of the dielectric volume, then what happens to this integral? You remember we have here, the volume integral of Q sub B over the new volume here, B prime. How much is this gonna be? You need to remember my sphere is here, all of the charges inside this sphere and I'm integrating on a surface around it. Do I have more than capital Q charge or I have the same? I have the same because the total charge is Q. Even if I go outside on a huge surface and I integrate, I still gonna find Q, all right? It's not gonna grow the charge. So this is gonna be Q, all right? So the only thing that changes here is this surface becomes S, this one becomes R prime S, this one becomes S prime, R prime, Q there. So practically, okay, we'll see how this goes. R prime, S prime here, excuse me, that should be And then how much is the uh, this integral? This is the area of the large sphere, which is four pi r prime square. Okay, so here that becomes r prime. That says stays q. That becomes here four r prime square. And therefore, this one, sorry, it becomes r prime square, which is outside of S. Okay, so now we found the electric field. And if you plot the electric field from the inside of the sphere to the outside, if I were to plot that field, this is E sub bar from the center of the sphere, which is radius, this is radius from zero, it would go like this. And then it will stop here to the maximum value for R and then it goes like that. That's how the field goes. Inside the sphere, at the center of the sphere, we'll discuss that um, to think of, I want you to think about this physically. At the center of the sphere, the field is zero. And you may think, what the heck? I have a zero field at the center of the sphere. I want you to think, and I'm gonna ask you why physically, not equations. Equations show us, and I'm telling you it's correct. It shows that the cent at the center of the sphere, the field is zero. And I want you to think about this physically, why the field is zero. 
at the center of the sphere. Not equations, no Gauss's law. Now, I want you to think physically. Even from the fundamentals on how you have one charge and then you have a field, all right, out of the charge. Think about it. To give you a hint, take inside the sphere a point and then get the diametrically opposite point. So all of the points in the sphere can be di divided into groups of two, all right? So, and then you will have the same number of groups of two because you take one and then they're diametrically opposite. Everyone has a diametrically opposite. Take that as a hint and see what happens thinking that way. All right, so that's where we're gonna stop. And what I would like to do in addition, let me see. In fact, I will give you a break for an exercise today, okay? You have a break for an exercise. So you don't have to turn anything on Friday, but think about this because I'm going to ask you. Think of this. That's your exercise, but not on paper. All right? Okay. Thank you. I don't know anyone in my group because I don't think you're in class. Did you guys? Um, I just knew myself when I said it. Did you put in everybody's I, I name? Ah, okay. So the your your colleague is Br R Robert Brown or something. Yes. Yeah, ah, yeah. he has not showed up. Yeah, yeah. I'll get rid of him. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, no. I'll put you. I'll put you in another team. Uh -huh. All right. I think there is a team that has two people. I will put you there. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Is it okay if I put you in another team of three and you become four? I'm, I'm if I cannot in. find. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. So are you in the field of my field? Yeah, so what is going to happen? You missed it. I did, I That's okay. We are going to have after the meter and make up assignment. Okay. So people uh, who want to make up for points, they're going to tell me. I missed so many points. I will ask students to tell me how many points they've missed. And for what, whatever, you know, I don't care how many points you've missed. And then you will have the opportunity to take the makeup assignment at home. It's going to be a take home makeup assignment. And then if for a, I, I design it so everybody can make up the points that they have missed, you'll see how I'm designing it. Okay. I have a way of doing it. Sure. <laughs> but you, can, you will have an opportunity to do it then. Okay. Thank you. So All right. Sure. <laughs>